Your car insurance, so you only pay for what you need. What do you think? I don't see it. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 liberty. I don't want you to ever stop trying. Okay. It's a big night for our friend Ryan Guzman on his hit show 911. And we are joined by Ryan now. You might not recognize him because he's got a new haircut, a quarantine cut. Take this all off and I put this on. TV show doesn't allow this. No. This is just me now. How are you happening now? Oil prices hit negative territory today as a result of the coronavirus crisis. What some oil producers may be forced to do if things don't change. With schools closed for the rest of the academic year, we'll tell you what Northside ISD has planned for graduation and for summer school. Starting today, anyone over the age of 10 must wear a face covering or mask while out in public. Violators face not only jail time, but also fines. What you need to know. And clearly the heat, well, it's back and it's that time of year. But what about rain chances and storm chances? We have some coming down the line. I'll talk to you more about that coming up in a few minutes. The kids are on their laptops, you're on your tablet, and you have a wimpy Wi-Fi. Coming up, how to fix those Wi-Fi woes. Fiesta may be delayed. The giving, though, is not. The Fiesta Especial Royal Court distributing checks today to local charities that help out those with disabilities. The News at 5 starts right now. At first at five, crude oil prices hitting negative territory amid the coronavirus pandemic. Today, the price fell below zero to negative $1.43 per barrel for May delivery. This is the lowest level since 1983 when New York when NYMEX first opened oil futures trading. The problem here is that producers have run out of storage for their stockpile. Analysts predict if things don't get better, Producers may start paying customers to take oil off their hands. While the plummet may lead to lower prices at the pump, it will also likely have a negative impact on the Texas economy. Meantime, it is the first day back to school, remote school for Texas school children following Governor Greg Abbott's announcement on Friday that all schools will stay closed for the rest of the academic year. As Stephanie Cerner reports from how to conduct graduations to how students will get their belongings back, a lot of districts are looking ahead, including the Northside ISD, the biggest district in San Antonio. NISD administrators have not made a final decision on how to proceed with graduation for their 12 high schools, but they have secured dates for later in the summer. Approximately 7,000 graduates. This is a lot of seniors that would be walking our stage, and we are currently looking at ways that we can honor them, that we can celebrate them, but perhaps in a virtual way. And so while our goal is still to provide an in-person live event, uh, we also are working on additional options in the event that that's not possible. NISD also looking at summer school, but with remote instruction. We have a, a small percentage of students who are not engaged. And, and we certainly worry about them. We worry about students who are engaged, but may, may not be receiving you know, full mastery of that material. And so again, plans are underway now to develop a type of summer school that would help address some of the, the instructional gaps. NISD spokesman Barry Pettis said they are also working on a plan that will allow students to get personal belongings left behind at schools. When we left for spring break, many individuals left personal belongings there in campus, whether in lockers, athletic lockers, band instruments, all those kinds of things. And so uh, very soon, campuses will be rolling out procedures. And Peta says those procedures may include belongings being brought out to students curbside, but parents will be hearing about all these plans in the coming weeks. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. And if your kids still don't have the resources they need, students or parents can call the main number to their home campus to get in touch with someone about getting those resources or a particular device. Remember to grab your face masks or face coverings when you leave the house. Today, an order from San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg and County Judge Nelson Wolf requiring anyone 10 years of age or older to cover their nose and mouth while in public. However, there are some important exceptions. Thinking of leaving your house without a face covering? Think again. The latest addendums to the city and county's emergency declarations say if you are caught without a covering in a public space, you could face a $1,000 fine or six months in jail. 
the requirement announced last Thursday went into effect today. The only instances that face coverings are not required while you're exercising outdoors, while pumping gas or operating outdoor equipment, while eating or drinking, when doing so poses a greater mental or physical health risk or safety or security risk, while in a building that requires security surveillance, including banks, or while driving alone or with passengers who are part of the same household as the driver. A few reminders. If you put your mask on before you go into a public space, be sure to wash your hands or use hand sanitizer before removing it. Avoid touching your face and wash your masks regularly. And remember, while wearing a mask does not necessarily protect you from getting COVID-19, if you have the virus and you're not showing symptoms, it can offer protection to those around you. The mayor is asking people not to buy surgical masks or N95 masks so that health care workers can continue to have a supply of them. If you don't have a mask, you can use fabric, scarves, bandanas, even a handkerchief to cover your face. We have guides on how to create your very own at home using simple materials. It's at KSAT.com. And now to three stories to know today, the body of a San Marcos police officer killed in the line of duty over the weekend, being moved from Austin to a San Marcos funeral home. 31 year old Justin Putnam was killed while responding to a domestic disturbance call on Saturday. The suspect Alfredo Perez de la Cruz ambushed Putnam and two other officers as they entered the home. He was later found dead from a self inflicted gunshot wound. A 31 year old man from San Antonio who was wanted in his girlfriend's murder died in a police shootout northeast of Dallas yesterday. He's been identified as Ramon Thomas Via Gomez. He'd been on the run since April 9th after his girlfriend, 41 year old Catherine Menendez, was found dead in her northeast side home during a welfare check. According to Garland Police, Via Gomez hijacked the bus yesterday, fired shots at officers during a chase. Two officers were injured. Via Gomez also shot and taken to the hospital where he died. Garland police say the 31 year old suspect also wanted in Brazoria County for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. A man recovering after he was shot several times on the west side overnight. Officers responded to the scene at around two in the morning on St. Nicholas Street after hearing shots fired. They arrived to find the victim with a number of gunshot wounds and shell cases in a nearby alley. Witnesses were questioned at the scene. The victim is in stable condition. No arrests have been made. Small sporadic protests against stay at home orders have popped up in some U.S. cities. But governors insist the measures are critical to any hope of reopening the country and say testing hurdles are creating challenges to easing restrictions. Karen Kafa brings us up to date from Washington. Groups of protesters are taking to the streets in some U.S. cities, demanding an end to stay at home measures. These policies are destroying this economy. A new NBC News Wall Street Journal poll suggests nearly 60% of Americans worry lifting restrictions too soon could make the pandemic worse. But these small groups of protesters have garnered support from the president. People feel that way. You're allowed to protest. Governors, meanwhile, are weighing competing guidance from public health experts and businesses on when and how to open up their state's economies. You don't need protests to convince anyone in this country that we have to get back to work. The question we all have to face is what's the reality if if we go too quickly. Uh, this could be unsafe for people. Making that more difficult, state officials say they don't have the supplies for widespread testing, a critical part of sending Americans back to work. More help is needed from the federal government on testing. We simply have not had enough test kits. We governors are doing the best we can with what we've got. Negotiations are underway on a nearly $500 billion spending package to fund more small business loans, hospitals and more testing. Lawmakers now under pressure while some Americans grow restless in limbo. That was Karen Kafa reporting. The burger chain Shake Shack is returning $10 million it received from the Paycheck Protection Program. In a statement, the founder and CEO Randy Garuti says that the company has additional capital to sustain long term stability that other business owners do not. The Paycheck Protection Program secured 
$350 billion to help small businesses stay afloat, but the money ran out within two weeks. Meantime, Texas state parks have reopened since being closed earlier this month in an effort to reduce the spread of COVID-19. The parks are open for day use only. Anyone who visits must wear a face mask and keep a six foot distance from others. The groups must also be six people or less. We went out to Government Canyon State Natural Area today to see what people had to say about being able to visit once again. Well, we've, we've taken walks around the block of the house, but you know, this is just nice. You get to get out and get in touch yeah. with nature again. So the mask is a small trade. It's a very small trade. Right now on KSAT.com, we have information on the reopening of the state parks, including a link to make a reservation. And you can also stay up to date with COVID-19 cases in your community. The next update for Bear County, by the way, tonight during the news at six. And what a weekend we had. We were down in the low 60s on Saturday, made it into the 90s on Sunday. Big temperature swings and we're in the 90s today and get ready for more big temperature changes, more ups and downs in the days ahead. But let's talk about what's happening right now. Bright sunshine, just some high thin clouds today. We topped out well now 93 degrees and previously the high was 92, but now we're at 93 after a morning low temperature of 53. So a pleasant morning, but it's that dry air that allows these cooler readings in the morning. Temperatures. According to our weather watchers, 97 in Talia's backyard in Eagle Pass, 91 in Leon Springs, we're 90 in Seguin, 88 Canyon Lake, and we're feeling the warmth out there. As we go through the evening, you'll see the temperatures fall off pretty quickly. By 9 p.m., 80 degrees, 11 p.m. in the mid-70s. As I mentioned before, more ups and downs this week temperature-wise, but also one shot at some rainfall, which could have some thunderstorms as well. We'll talk more about that coming up. Thank you, Adam. Fiesta 2020 still a few months away, but today on what would have been the start of the full first full Fiesta week, the Fiesta Especial Royal Court helped to raise money for local nonprofits who are dedicated to serving people with disabilities. The Royal Court donating $14,000 to support the causes of seven organizations, including the Autism Treatment Center, Morgan's Wonderland and Sunshine Cottage School for Deaf Children. The money will be used for things like replacing batteries for hearing aids, and in some cases it's going to go even further. We have a program so that we scholarship hearing aid moles, and moles are the things that go inside the ear that holds the hearing aid in place for young children, and those cost about $90 a piece. And so we'll be able to scholarship some children so that they'll have hearing aid moles. Fiesta goes on. Fiesta Especial plans to hold its annual celebration day for children and adults with disabilities on November 10th. I like how they put the Barbie car to work there. <laughs> a reminder this week, we are helping you Fiesta at home by rebroadcasting all the 2019 parades starting tonight at 7 o'clock. We've got the Cavaliers River Parade. You can watch it right here on KSAT 12 online at KSAT.com or on your streaming device. And you can find the rest of this week's schedule on KSAT.com. And so if you're looking for some of your favorite Fiesta foods, how can you watch a parade without Fiesta food? We're going to help you get into the spirit. Right now on our website, we have a list of 15 local restaurants offering curbside service for things like chicken on a stick. Yum. Just look for this story on the homepage at KSAT.com. All right, with the entire family at home between your work, the kids' schoolwork, even while they're surfing the internet, you might find yourself battling for bandwidth. Up next, a few easy ways to fix your Wi Fi woes. New at five, the battle over bandwidth. So many parents are working from home now and kids are taking classes online all at the same time, and that may be stretching the internet signal thin. 12 Your Sides, Marilyn Moritz with some ways to fix your Wi-Fi frustrations. With so many family members online at the same time, you may be frustrated by a wimpy Wi-Fi signal, and many of us have no idea how to fix it. Consumer Reports tech guru says first, understand what it does. Think of a router as an electronic traffic cop. What it does is it directs the internet connection from your internet service provider throughout your home in the form of Wi-Fi. Next, location. It matters where you put the router. 
For the best results, you should place your Wi-Fi router in the center of your home so the signal can reach as much of your home as possible. It's also helpful to know which items in your house can be Wi-Fi roadblocks besides brick walls, floors, and doors. Your appliances like your refrigerator or your microwave may also block the signal. It bounces off and won't pass through. And that's not all. Water absorbs radiation, so your Wi-Fi may have trouble near pools, tubs, and even a fish tank. If moving the router doesn't help and you have a house full of newer devices, it may be time for a new router, especially if yours is more than three years old. If you live in a small space with few obstructions, CR recommends this model from Synology for about $200. For a larger home, CR says consider a mesh network style router that works with a hub to spread the signal throughout your house. They recommend the Eero home wi Wi-Fi for $250. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, normally at this time we would be flying over downtown, looking at the river walk. Yeah, I might have been a river parade judge. Yeah. Adam might have been blowing that confetti cannon all over the crowd. <laughs> Not might have. Oh, it would have happened. Oh yeah, it would have happened. It would have been on. Instead of we're, I'm doing that in the confines of my own home with my children. <laughs> we're still finding confetti. Yes, we are from last Thursday. We're going to find it for a while, but I know it's hard to believe that today would have been the river parade and we would have been live down along the river, but you know, those are the times that we're in right now. So let's take a look at our weather and talk about our headlines here. Nice cirrus clouds rolling overhead. It's a beautiful day again today. Now we have had some big temperature swings. Expect more of that in the days to come. Not quite as extreme though. And there will be a Friday night cold front that affects us. And a really our only shot at rain or storms is the middle part of the week as we get into Wednesday. So let's talk about all this. First of all, temperatures and then we'll get into the rain chances. Look at the high temperatures so far this month, ranging from 58 early in the month to 94 degrees on Sunday. Today, 93. I mean, it's just big up and down roller coaster ride throughout the month. We'll continue to see more fluctuations here this week. It's not going to be just a steady level line in terms of temperatures. Right now, lower 90s for most of us. Bulverde 91, New Braunfels 93. Divine a little bit warmer at 97. Bandera, you're at 93 and 97 Del Rio and Carrizal Springs. We do have triple digits. And that's in Laredo at this hour. So going ahead the rest of this week, it notice how today we made it in the low 90s and then tomorrow will be in the lower 80s. So a bit of a drop because of extra cloud cover. Then we jump back up into Friday, low 90s, only to fall off again for the upcoming weekend. All right, I want to talk about humidity and dew point levels out there. Very dry yesterday with that westerly wind, that dry air coming in from West Texas today. Very similar, a lack of humidity. Yeah, it's warm and sunny, but dew points only in the 40s and 50s. That changes overnight. Now watch how quickly this southeasterly wind does its job overnight and boosts these dew points well into the 60s by first thing tomorrow morning. Significance of that, not just that it feels muggy outside tomorrow, but it's likely going to lead to some low clouds and morning fog to start the day tomorrow. And I think it's going to be hard to really erode that low cloud deck for a good portion of the day. Otherwise, no big weather features across the state right now. We have a little bit of shower activity in the panhandle, but I want to shift the attention to California. That's where we have this big dip in the upper level flow right near San Francisco. That's the next feature that's going to be affecting us, and that's our one shot at rainfall this week, but it could come at the cost of a few thunderstorms. So let's go through time here with our future cast. As I mentioned, low clouds to start the day tomorrow with some fog. Then by the afternoon, we'll see that cloud deck break up probably from the outer edges inward, but I think around San Antonio, it's going to stick around for quite a bit of time, at least through the midday and early afternoon. Then we get into Wednesday, we do it all over again. Low clouds in the morning, and then by the midday hours, that's our shot at some showers or maybe even a brief thunderstorm. And there is a slight chance of severe weather, but that's mainly northeast of San Antonio. It's a narrow window of opportunity for some rain and a few thunderstorms on Wednesday. Again, about midday time frame. So tomorrow morning, 65 degrees with that fog, 72 at noon. 83 in the afternoon, so not quite as hot, a good 10 degrees cooler than today, just because of the additional cloud cover that we're anticipating. Just some sunny breaks in the afternoon, Wednesday 80s, Thursday right near 90. Now get ready for a sunny stretch of weather Thursday all the way through the upcoming weekend, and that's with the passage of a cold front as well. So sunny on Friday at 93, and then we drop more than 10 degrees as we get into the weekend with that sunshine. Beautiful week.
great week to watch Parade yeah, on TV. Absolutely, on TV. All right, now, is the DAC deal almost done? No, I don't think so, but at least they're talking. They're encouraging signs and involving both sides, finally. When we come back, more about DAC and what he has to offer and what the Cowboys are countering with. And finally, we're hearing from Gerald McCoy for the first time since he signed with Dallas. Coming up. Pro Football Government, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dak Prescott, the Dallas Cowboys have had positive talks when it comes to a new contract. That's according to the Dallas Morning News, with off-season virtual workouts set to start today, with the Cowboys star quarterback threatening to hold out. The two sides have spoken in the last two weeks. After it was just about last month, the Cowboys put the franchise tag on their fifth-year quarterback, or they had not come to an agreement on a new long-term deal. Cowboys wanting five years, Prescott and his people wanting four, and disagreement over guaranteed money as well. There's no question that Dak's representatives want him to be the highest paid player in the NFL, surpassing Russell Wilson, Wilson's annual salary of $35 million a year, and now a glimmer of hope. For the first time since he signed with the Dallas Cowboys, new defensive tackle Gerald McCoy is talking. The six-time Pro Bowler agreed to a three-year, $20 million deal. In the interview posted on the DallasCowboys.com, McCoy says the two sides tried to get a deal done last year, but it didn't work out. But now it looks forward to suiting up for his new head coach, Mike McCarthy, alongside Demarcus Lawrence. I truly believe in Coach McCarthy and uh, what his plan is, and I believe in my teammates and the opportunity I have to win. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm coming down the final stretch of my career, and I haven't had an opportunity to make the playoffs. So I, I believe that this team is the one that can really make some noise this year. All right, while the Dallas Cowboys pick 17th overall in the first round of the NFL draft this coming Thursday, the Houston Texans, barring the trade, will not pick until the second round. That's after they gave up their first round pick in 2020 to land offensive lineman Larry Laramie Tunzel last season. Bill O'Brien, who carries the title as head coach and now general manager, has continued his dealing through the offseason. That included shipping off DeAndre Hopkins to Arizona for running back David Johnson and, of course, trading for wide receiver Brandon Cooks and signing free agent Randall Cobb to try and fill the void. So what will his focus be this week in the draft? I would say defensive line. I would say we're looking at all the positions, uh, safety, obviously, um, is another position that I think we can add to. We, we've added Eric Murray. We've added Jalen Watkins, but, but we can continue to add depth there. But, yeah, I, I'd say, you know, there's not one specific need, but there's several. All right, the Texans pick number eight in the second round, 40th overall, and you can watch the first three rounds of the NFL draft on KSAT 12 starting Thursday night at 7 p.m. live right here on Channel 12. All right. Thank you, Greg. Got it. My son can't wait. We'll be right back. All right, so tomorrow, fog to start the day, low clouds through at least midday, then a little bit of afternoon sun. 83, not quite as hot because of that extra cloud cover. Thursdays are only shot at rain from some thunderstorms this week. Even then, only about 30 to 40 percent chance. Then we get into Thursday through the weekend, and we're looking at nothing but sunshine. But a cold front will be affecting us, and that'll drop temperatures a bit as we get into the upcoming weekend. Thank you, Adam. And don't forget, in about an hour and a half, tonight at 7 o'clock, you can catch the 2019 Texas Cavaliers River Parade. We are rebroadcasting all of the 2019 Fiesta Parades this week. In fact, you can find the rest of this week's schedule on KSAT.com. We'll even have the flambeau on Saturday night. Love it. You and I from a year ago. Yep. Thanks so much for watching the News at 5 with us. World News up next. We'll see you back here at 6.